But we all got a job. We got things to do. And the legacy of the Prophet وسلم, was enjoining good and forbidden evil. By the Quran, which is Kitab al Haqq, the book of righteousness. Use the Quran, use the Sunnah of the Prophet. وسلم. It's the job of every one of us. Every one of us. You know, sometimes I know some of you may think I'm an extremist and a radical if I make this statement. But some of us have lost the vision so much that even when you look at our wives and our daughters, people try to take their daughters and make them a world genius before they make them a mother. Before you make them a daughter and you make them a mother, you try to make them a world genius. And when they reach 30 and 40 years, they realize, but originally I'm supposed to be a mother and a wife, but no husband wants me. And I can't have no children now. So they have lost the whole mission of life. When the Prophet ﷺ says a woman is like a nation, yes, education is there. A woman, talabul ilm farizatun ala kulli muslimin wa muslimatin. We need to teach women and children and men, and everyone. But you don't forget the woman career. A woman getting married in the right time, having children in the right time, being a mother in the right time, being a wife in the right time, she enjoys the luxury of what life really has for her. She's blessed with Jannah even from here. Didn't the Prophet speak about that? A mother who is good to her children and good to her husband, and a mother who teaches her children and does the right thing, she can enter into any door of Jannah. Today, sometimes the mother gets lost into the world, and we, I, I know so many people, they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on their daughters. Boom, the daughter becomes everything in the world, but couldn't become a wife of a man. And then she got to take second class. And then can't even have children at that age. And then become nothing, and then get frustrated in life. Nothing is wrong. In Islam, we learn you could study and marry. What I'm saying is we have lost the vision, the purpose of life. And instead of man working and maintaining the wife and taking care of the family, he leaves it for the wife to do it. So the man has become the woman. We have lost the vision. And the man is looking for a wife who got a good job who could mind him also. We have missed the point of the Quran. Yes, let the woman educate themselves so they could educate their children. But the man must not miss his vision. To maintain the wife and be that person in the home. The wife will educate them and the wife will be that caring motherly figure who could teach the community and teach the people. Yes, she could do service in the hospital. Ah, no problem. Be a doctor, be a lawyer, whatever. There are a lot of reasons they could do it. But in doing all of that, don't give up your Islamic career. Let that go together. Not do one and then wait to do the next. Then we miss the point of life. It's like putting the cart before the horse. The horse is in front and then the carriage in the back. That's why today in America and in the Muslim world, not only in America, in the Muslim world, you got <coughs> hundreds of thousands of women, educated, professionals, highest degree, good job, good house, good car, good money, and not a good husband. They can't even get a husband. They chose the wrong time. Nothing anything is wrong with them. They're good. But they just chose the wrong time to do the right thing. It's like a man at the age of 80 decide, I want to start having children now. When you were 25 and 30, you were not having children. What do you think? You Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam? Or we Zakaria alayhi salatu wasalam? We say, Ya Allah, I reach the age I can't make anymore. Gray hair old, but I want a child and Allah give you a child. No, we got to do what we should do when we have to do it. That's what Allah has designed in life. But because of the dunya, because of the materialistic things in the dunya, we have lost the mission. We're searching for everything else. We need to let everything go together. We eat, we sleep, we study. We do everything together. It's not about us studying and then eat the next week or study every day and sleep one week after. We eat, we sleep, we study. You go to the toilet, you do everything. You play. Well, let the Quranic life and the Sunnah life be part of our daily life. That's all I'm saying. It's not about being a radical and being an extreme. It's being practical. And that will be a form of ta'amuruna bil ma'roof wa tanhawna anil munkar. Of enjoining good and forbidding evil. Because this is a major evil in the world today, brothers and sisters. It's a major, major evil in the world today. Our lifestyle. Because a lot of us, we got good intention for Islam. We got a good intention to be a good Muslim. We really want to, we love to. But our lifestyle got to be adjusted. 
We've got to do something with this lifestyle. Get it back to Quran and Sunnah. And remember, Quran and Sunnah has nothing about being, not being wealthy. The Prophet Sallallahu wife, wife, Khadija radiallahu ta'ala, she was the most wealthiest woman in the time. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, father-in-law Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala, who powerful, poor leader, wealthy and everything. His son-in-law Usman radiallahu ta'ala, who was known as Ghani, the wealthy. So I'm not saying anything against wealth. No, anything against education. His wife was a businesswoman. So I'm not telling you take your wife and put her in a box and lock her up. I'm saying live the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa That's the legacy. That's what he left behind. And if our women of today will follow his wife's example, and if our men of today will follow the examples of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that's what he left behind. He didn't say I'm leaving behind property and land and Mecca and Medina for Muslims to inherit. He said I'm leaving behind me two things, the Quran and my Sunnah. And if you hold on to it, we will not go in dhalala, we will not go astray. That's all. Islam calls for practical, realistic life. A happy, jolly, nice life. A lot of times, a lot of us feel <clears throat> that when we become religious, when we become practicing Muslims, then we deprive ourselves of the dunya. That's a foolish statement. Nobody enjoyed the dunya as the Prophet ﷺ. He ate, he drank, he had richest son-in-laws, father-in-laws, he had the kings inviting him. He, he refused. He refused the sun in his right hand and the moon in his left hand. He refused the dunya. He had so much. You want to enjoy life more than that? There's no president. There's no king in the world had the opportunities that he had. He had the wealthiest wife, the wealthiest son-in-law, the luckiest daughters, everything. He had power. He had when the kings of that time were wondering, what is Muhammad, peace be upon him? Who is this Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? They were amazed. Who is this man that is ruling with all this power? And when the kings would send spies to see who or what Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is, they saw that his followers would hold his hand. They would not even let his spit drop. They would not let a word fall before they follow it. Huh? When he would make wuzu, they would catch his water. They will be with him, whatever he do, when he prayed, they followed, whatever he did. And the kings were mesmerized. They were almost crazy. What does this man have that people just love him so much? There the kings had to buy people. Had to try to win people over. Had to try to fool people. Order and command slaves to be under them. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam were relieving slaves. He was releasing slaves. He was telling people to let the slaves go free. And when the slaves go free, they all want to be his followers. Allahu Akbar. Huh? And the kings, they were buying slaves to have followers. Think about that. What? His akhlaq. His lifestyle. His legacy. What he lived for. They admired. Zaid 